I'm here to tell you the story of an old boy. A man named Joe Fogarty, class of 1901. Joe was one of ten children. He was a keen footy player, a member of the first 18, and he played 16 games of VFL for University and Melbourne. Joe became a doctor after footy, and with the First World War raging around him, Joseph Fogarty enlisted along with his brother Christopher in the Australian Army. He was sent to Gallipoli, where he worked as a medical officer. At Gallipoli, in November of 1915, a fierce Turkish barrage of shells killed or wounded 120 Australians in one minute. Joe Fogarty's brother was among them. After that, one can only imagine how hard it would have been for Joe to write back to his mum, who was at home, desperately hoping her sons would live so far away in Australia. Still shattered by the loss of his brother, Joe was assigned to the 6th Australian Field Ambulance and transferred to France, where he shortly engaged in the Battle of the Somme. Joe's battalion were based near the village of Pozier at a forward dressing station, which is essentially a large first aid post. As the Australian attacks went on from the 23rd through 29th of July, Joe and his medical team stayed at their post in an abandoned shed, treating the increasing number of wounded and dying Australian men who arrived hourly. And the German artillery shells were coming closer and closer to the aid station. The wounded men kept coming, some walking, some carried, and some crawling through the mud, all in pain, all afraid. Two days later, the German artillery directly targeted the dressing station, and Joe and his men were given the choice to stay and likely die or to withdraw and abandon the men. Paddy boy Joe Fogarty was ducked to the college in 1901. And 15 years later, Captain Joseph Fogarty of Australian Medical Corps refused to leave the wounded behind. He stood firm at his post as the artillery fell. Operating on a blood-soaked table made of wooden biscuit boxes and canvas under one or two spluttering lamplights, as the artillery fell, they kept working. But the wounded kept coming, and the artillery kept falling. The Germans, on the 29th of July, launched a ferocious infantry and artillery attack on the area around the now ruined village of Pozier, about 4K kilometres from Joe's dressing station, and the fighting was bitter and cruel. Then, the Germans attacked the Australian positions around Pozier with poisonous chlorine gas. Oddly enough, chlorine gas doesn't actually smell like chlorine. It smells like uh, pepper. And it has a sickly green-yellow kind of colour to it. And you can see it creeping towards you, like a fog. If it's breathed in, it will kill the victim painfully over days. The warning call of gas, 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 quick boys, was heard at the dressing station about midday on July the 31st and the sickly green-yellow clouds could be seen drifting slowly towards them from the area of Moke Farm to the north. It must have been a strange thing, having treated so many wounded men, to see such a horrible death so slowly approaching, so casually. Any sane man would have run for his life. As the gas began to overrun the dressing station, Captain Joseph Fogarty remained at his post. Gas masks were put on the wounded, and eventually put on Joe himself. Seeing the world through the green panes of a gas mask, surrounded by gas and darkness and wounded men, Joe, the paddy boy, picked up the next man, put him onto the surgical table made of wooden biscuit boxes and canvas, and went to work. He did this, exhausted, almost alone, 
under continual bombardment of shrapnel, high explosive and poison gas shells for five days. For this act of faithfulness and duty, Joe was awarded the military cross and he learned to play footy on Hill Oval. Joe returned to England after the battle, but was shortly declared unfit for service. There is no more information in the record, but it's highly likely he had battle fatigue, shell shock, PTSD, and his mental health was severely damaged. He never went to France again and returned home to live in Melbourne in peace for the rest of his days until he died in 1954. Joe never spoke about the war. This Anzac Day, you may simply want to have a quiet day, play some games, kick the footy, hang around with your mates. And there's nothing wrong with that, lads. But remember, the reason you can do those things is because women and men who, both then and now, risked everything for their country, for their family, for their friends, and for us. Men like SBC boarder Joe Fogarty, who had English and math class in the Waterford Wing. You may hear the last post play, but do you really listen to it? You may see the Anzac Day parades and see nothing more than lines of old, weary women and men marching up and down Sturt Street. But listen, see, remember. As the last post plays, as they march by, remember that they were soldiers once and young. And some of them were just like you. <laughs>